What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangilli here with another Middle Ground video. Now, this blog just came out today, and you might not have even seen it yet. So what I'm going to do is go over it and kind of talk about my first impressions and maybe some thoughtful impressions I have on the changes to the Red Star system. Now, uh, a little uncharacteristic of me normally, I'm going to do this in the form of a compliment sandwich. I'm going to, if you're unfamiliar with the term, lead off with something very positive about Fox Next and what they've been doing. Then, in the middle, is going to be all of my criticisms and critiques, and at the end, I will, again, be a little bit complimentary towards Fox Next. Uh, this is in an effort to explain that I do not hate <laughs> Uh, the company that makes this game, I am disappointed constantly by uh, previous actions, decisions, and uh, lack of quality that they've been putting out. But as we'll see, they have made some changes. So to start off with, I want to thank specifically uh, Alice, Amir, and to some extent John for their attentiveness in coming with communication. The last few blog posts we've received have been exactly the kind of messaging that we have been lacking for so long. The exact kind of communication that uh, is communication, not just saying words, saying words that mean something. So this blog post helps. This is a very important thing to tell the community. Now, not everyone's going to read every blog post, obviously, but that's not your fault or your responsibility, Fox Next. Your responsibility is to make sure the information is present and available, and people are making their own decisions as to whether they read it or not. So thank you, and I mean it truly. Thank you for taking communication seriously. It shows a growth level of respect you have for the community that I don't believe a lot of people, myself included, felt before. Now, <clears throat> let's go right in. The Red Star promotion credit prices is the first thing we're going to discuss. Now, the cost to use promotion credits for all characters will be adjusted at all tiers, five red stars and above. The five red star cost will be lowered from 300 to 150. Net positive, right, everybody? Like, we're all cool? That sounds great, right? Like, ch is cheaper. Doesn't matter... Anything else right now, just is cheaper, is good. Any players that previously spent 300 credits will get like 150 back. Uh, I don't think I'm... I know they want to do that. I'm not confident they're going to pull it off, but good, like, make it work. Like, if you make it work, cool. That's correct and the correct thing to do. I support that. The six red star cost... Um, it didn't go up. They just changed the the numbers, you know? Uh, and we'll get into that in a second. It goes from five gold promotion tokens to 100. Uh, that said, uh, the amount of gold promotion credits you currently have are going to be multiplied by 20. So it looks like a bigger number, in theory, but it it isn't a bigger number. It's just inflation. They just, they, instead of one, they made everything two, and then they made everything cost twice as much. You know, it it stands to reason that it's okay. Uh, the same thing going with seven red stars goes from 50 promotion credits to 150. Now, this is interesting because we couldn't get uh, seven red stars through the store ever. Even when they started showing them in the store, it was incredibly unlikely anyone had enough gold promotion credits to make that purchase anyway. Now, it is, uh, if you look at the previous numbers, it was five gold promotion credits or 10 times as many to get a seven. Now, uh, it is uh, 1.5 times as many promotion credits to go from seven, uh, from six to seven. And that's less. <laughs> like it's less. It costs less. I personally believe a lot of this is because of how they're going to put 
gold promotion credits into the system and they don't want the people who've spent the most money to immediately have everything done and the people who've been sandbagging like me uh, and, and storing the resources to just immediately have everything they want because uh, they've been waiting for this kind of change because they knew it had to come. Uh, I don't have any particular issues with the price changes. Uh, the inflation was just to control the numbers, and I suspect a lot of that was because of how they're going to introduce gold and silver promotion credits going forward with the uh, Red Star you know, flash event. We'll get into that as we go lower. Moving into the Red Star orbs. Several improvements will be made to the Red Star orbs. Now, a lot of my longtime viewers are going to see a lot of these and go, where have I heard that before? Hi, I'm here. I'm very happy. I'm taking no credit for a lot of the changes that have happened, although I have been advocating for them to anyone who will hear, including people inside of Fox Next. I hope that they listen to me and other content creators when we talked about this, or maybe they just came up with the same solution. Maybe they realized that this ended up being the correct choice, and I'm happy for it. Going into it, the side pillars of Red Star Orbs are empty. We've been talking about that for a while. In the new system, they're adding promotion credits. We've been talking about that for a while. Excellent. There was no reason for the Red Star Orbs to not always have something in there, and now that it's guaranteed promotion credits, huge. Absolutely huge. Uh, especially that everything but the Elite Six Star. I don't know why they would choose that. Whatever. Um, we'll see how, how much that matters in a month or two. But adding extra pillars to the only orb in the game that didn't have pillars should have been done a long time ago. We'll never forget that, but it happened. Good. Great. Opening a duplicate of a Red Star will grant the same number of Elite Credits as opening a duplicate of a Two Red Star. Yes, cool, like, uh, sure. I don't think that addresses the actual problem, which is that it shouldn't cost 5,000 credits to open an orb. It should cost 2,000. But I can't criticize a positive thing even though it doesn't affect all of the problems. So, good, right? Red one and two red stars are pretty useless in the game even with the changes that are below. That said... Uh, you know, don't fix the symptom, fix the disease, that kind of thing. Uh, the updated contents of basic red orbs will ensure that upon opening 20 orbs, even if you got all duplicates of the lowest red star characters, you're guaranteed to have enough credits to purchase one for red star orb. Again, great. Uh, yes, this is kind of the point. Uh, being able to open orbs... Uh, and guarantee a four red star orb is called progression. Now, progression is that I, I do have to explain this a little bit because I don't think Fox Next ever quite understood it. Maybe they're getting a little bit of grasp on it. And just in case you guys don't know, progression is when the actions you take uh, benefit your account in one way or another. Uh, you can pay for progression, you can work towards progression, you can focus on progression. A lot of players are familiar with this idea. Uh, in order to unlock Star Wars, you farm Guardians and Ravager characters. That doesn't necessarily mean you care for the Guardians and Ravager characters, and that doesn't necessarily mean that your Ravager Boomer, who is five star, is going to get very, very high investment. It just means it that action helps you progress towards another action, which helps you progress towards another. For a long time, Red Stars have not been a progression system. As a matter of fact, I always make the reference that they are the itsy, bitsy spider. Crawling up the water spout, and every time you reach the top, you go all the way back to the bottom. Every time you open a four, you get zero. Every time you open a five, you go not back to four, but to zero, and you have to repeat the ladder. So this kind of system with a, a, a set number saying the absolute worst case scenario for you is opening 20 orbs to guarantee a four red star this is progression i don't think it's great progression i personally would like it if every 10 uh, but again that leads into my previous point which was i think that orbs should probably only cost about two thousand mm -hmm. it is what it is I, I think this is a benefit overall. I think that they should probably look at this feature and apply it to, I don't know, premium orbs, milestone orbs, every orb in the game with a, uh, what do we call it in World of Warcraft, um, 
bad luck mechanics, bad luck fail safes, where if you do have bad RNG, that shouldn't, one, punish you as a player in the game, and two, definitely shouldn't punish you as someone who is willing to spend money in the game. I feel like that level of punishment only incentivizes a player to look elsewhere for their gaming amusement. Uh, the last point on this, Elite 7 Red Stars uh, will have the price lowered from 5,000 Elite 7 credits to 2,500. Great. Now, also, in addition, take the Elite 7 and make it all of the Elite Orbs. You have figured out that this makes sense. Now apply it downward. I do not think the speed in which players will accrue this is a problem. I do not think um, there's an issue going forward with this idea. Uh, I don't think... Uh, Everyone's roster is going to look the same because I know and everyone knows as long as red stars are the hardest thing to get and the most beneficial thing you can put on your team, ISO 8s will never matter. You can't hype up a brand new selling thing if people are not even progressing on the previous one. So I think that this is a little bit too little. I think that uh, all orbs need to be 2000 is my opinion, 2500, fine, you know, what is that, two extra orbs, so every 12 orbs instead of every 10 orbs, maybe, on average, probably less, probably 10 anyway, but I think that makes the most sense, that will help you progress your roster, because remember, red star orbs are, in fact, RNG orbs. Now, uh, the two changes have already been made, we already know about them, uh, it's good to see this, because this is, if you remember, what their old blog post used to be, but hey, this is the stuff that we did do. Uh, this week that you already know about or you didn't notice. This is kind of a, a good note to throw in in case people didn't notice, and this is exactly the kind of content you want to see. I don't want to be last week tonight with John Oliver. I want to know what's going on now, what's going on in the future, and then feel free to add a quick blurb about what happened. They added another row to the Elite Store and the drop rates for three and four red stars in the basic RSOs have been increased excellent right no cool it's still rng but you know the number is higher so whatever character release cadence i'm going to lead with i'm not a fan of this i'm not a fan of this for any player in the game uh now let's talk about it remin as the cost of acquiring characters with promotion credits will significantly decrease correct and the value of red star orbs will significantly increase uh, the release cadence of adding new characters will slightly change. Okay, sure, what are you doing? Well, a character first becomes available through any method in the game. They will be added to every level of Red Stars. Excellent. Uh, the way this is read is the second you can purchase a character, that character will still have their increased drop rate for Red Stars, and they will always be in Red Stars. Great upcoming characters like uh, Proxima Midnight, well, she's already here, Corvus Glaive, uh, Ebony Maw, they will be added to Red Stars in the same way that they had previously, and we will have more opportunities to get them as we will get more Red Stars. Uh, with the exception of certain characters like Ultron, obviously they want to keep something special, totally fine. However, the character will not appear for acquisition for promotion credits or in the store until that character becomes farmable. Now, I know they didn't know this, but when they put farmable in quotes, it scared me because I don't know what they consider farmable because I consider farmable node or store. Doesn't matter which node, doesn't matter which store. If they, if I can take an action in the game that uh, targets a character, it's farmable. If I, can, if I have to open a random orb, like an Ultimus orb or a premium orb like Minerva and uh, have a chance of getting them, not a farmable character. An accessible character, not a farmable character. We feel that allowing a direct path for both a seven gold new character and their respective seven red star potentially on the day of release could be too widely oppressive. We will closely monitor this issue. Um, I, I agree that perhaps allowing players to immediately have the strongest version of a character based on their Visa or MasterCard number or limit can be a little bit of an issue. That said, um, I do think that maybe there's a middle ground here where just say 
you can't make purchases of six or seven red stars. You can only make purchases that would have, you know, silver promotion credits. There are a lot of what I think they may have missed on this one is that there are a lot of, you know, fan favorite characters. Uh, Symbiote Spider-Man, for example, is a fan favorite character. That was this whole boycott thing going on when he was released. But that didn't necessarily stop people who like Symbiote Spider-Man from buying him. He ends up being a good character. If I didn't, if I had the means but not the opportunity to have a higher red star on a character from the Marvel Universe that I happen to like, that also happens to be a good character, I would, I would be a little upset. So I do agree that maybe having a seven gold and seven red at the cost of like what, thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, that's the ridiculous number. And if someone's willing to pay it, great, no problem. But I don't think that getting a four or five red star on a character, even with the changes that we're about to address, is that detrimental, especially because this is a hero collector game where a lot of your players are Marvel fans first and mobile game fans slash, you know, strategy game fans second. Uh, I think that closely monitoring this issue means you should probably allow characters to be purchasable up to five stars, five red stars. That's my opinion. Comment below and let me know what you think. Here's the power curve. Now, uh, what they have, this is what they've set now. Previously, they mentioned it. Here's where they're going. The old system, we all know what it was. Up to three red stars was pretty unimpactful for most characters in the game. Once you got to four, five, six, and seven, you started seeing meaningful. Uh, and depending on how late into the game you are, anything under a four red star was actively useless, and you didn't start seeing benefits until you reached 5, 6, or 7. Uh, the new system just kind of flattens that number down. This is something Casino used to say all the time at the beginning of Red Stars. Uh, this is something I've been saying for a long time. The separation of power between a 1 and a 2 and a 3, they, it needs to feel like a small but meaningful jump every star. 5, 10, 20, 35, which is the 15. Uh, and then another 15 from 50, 60, 75. Um, some people think that that, in effect, uh, makes it weird because uh, a six red star used to be, you know, 15% higher than a five. For PvP, especially for upcoming PvP arena, I imagine that could be an issue. Now, they do address that right here to ensure that this doesn't significantly affect the difficulty of PvE content containing characters using red stars. Characters with less than seven red stars will have their red stars reduced by one. For example, a PvE character at four red stars now should have the same combat stats as a three red star character after the update. This will affect the displayed power values of those characters by showing numbers lower than what they are now. However, the difficulty of the nodes should remain the same. I'm going to repeat this because I think a lot of people may have focused on the wrong word on this. A PvE character at four red stars should now have the same combat stats as a three red star character. Uh, and if you take a quick look at these numbers right here, you'll see a new four red star is 35. A previous four red star was 20. If I'm reading this correctly, if this was worded as it should be, and Fox Next, I know you're not really good with words. You throw balls far. If I want good words, I'll talk to a languager. I think what you're saying is the characters in raids and uh, nodes and dark dimension are getting a reduced red star where my characters and all of the red stars that I've accrued over time will remain the same. I know a lot of people who may have read a little bit quick. I was having this conversation earlier. Some people think, but I have a six red star. I don't want to have a five red star, even though the numbers stay the same. And I had to read it again and go, I don't think that's how this works. So according to this, I think that uh, what they're doing is they're balancing content or they're trying to, let's face it, it's not going to work, but they're trying to credit, you know, A for effort, I guess, um, make it so that we don't feel a, a hike on both sides of the fight, kind of like how when they rework a character and that character on previous nodes becomes way more difficult, like when they reworked Ultron or when they reworked Groot or Star-Lord 
and some of the earlier node farms became way harder because the reworked Star Wars was infinitely better than the Star Wars as, as in past. Not, a lot of people may not have remembered that. It's okay. Uh, as far as the power curve goes, I, I can't really complain, right? I'm getting stronger for actions I've already taken. Uh, I think this is uh, long overdue. I believe that the balance is so amazing. And then I believe that uh, the idea of a seven red star should always be the chase. You should be able to easily get to five red stars and six and red stars are the, ooh, exciting. I think many of you guys know what the feeling of getting a six or seven red star on a character that is lackluster. Like, I don't know if you watched my previous video, maybe... Uh, kingpin um any red stars on kingpin actually make him worse somehow but you, you know like i think now the red stars do something that they didn't previously which is uh show you growth that matters and even at a two star being the same now as a three star a three star being the same as a four star and a four star being the same as a five star when you see it like that you now know that your characters are going to get stronger, but the content uh, might not be getting stronger. What that means for future content, we can only wait and see. I like the power curve changes. I hope uh, you do too. If you notice something I didn't, please feel free to comment below. New flash event cadence. A new flash event, chaos theory, requiring Wakandans will run monthly and reward silver and gold promotion credits. Well, let's be clear. It's gonna reward silver and then gold promotion credits. You're not getting both. Uh, furthermore, we're scheduling each of the following events to start on a monthly cadence. Finally. When is the next X event? When is the next gold event? Has been a question I, as a streamer, have had to ask multiple, ask and answer multiple times. And I have to tell them, well, sometimes it's six weeks, sometimes it's two months, sometimes it's whatever. This is beautiful. This is how it should be. Players should know when things are going to happen. It's not going to affect panic farming. People who are willing to spend money are going to spend money. People who know what to work towards and when will make those decisions accordingly. Helping the players navigate their gameplay experience is a very important part of gameplay. I would like to see this more, but... Thank you for doing this now. This is phenomenal. The Red Star Flash event for Chaos Theory requiring Wakandans will be on the first Saturday of a month. Uh, the first four missions will only require four Wakandans because the fifth mission can't be anything less than five star. It's Shuri. Great. No notes. Uh, Relic Hunt will be the second Saturday and Payday will be the third Saturday. One is left out and that is because Block Party, which gives arguably one of the most important resources in the game, will only run every two months instead of every month. Um, I don't like it. I don't think anyone likes it, but like, fine, right? I, as long as I know when it's coming, I guess it's better. I don't know why tier four ability materials are still treated like they are the most important thing in the game. Tier 4 ability materials are not necessary on a lot of characters, unlike Tier 3 ability materials or purple mats. So having extra would actually allow players to kind of experiment with characters and maybe see if, you know, it's worth it. Especially because you can't refund them. That's a huge deal. Any amount I've placed into a character, it gone forever. You know, unless something happens and you allow a refund. If I fat finger a tier five passive on a character beat that i was just reading well i'm i'm out of those materials like i can't get them back so i don't necessarily think that more tier four ability materials especially now are a problem especially with the idea of red ability materials coming wink uh, i don't think this needs to be that far apart i think you can easily do that but i believe that this is kind of set up so that when they make a change they can easily make it once every month and kind of build themselves up as like hey we've listened and we brought it back that's it is what it is the fact that we now know when these events are coming the fact that we can plan around these events the fact that they are monthly well most of them are monthly and specifically the gold event coming back all the time the relic hunt event meh 
the gold event, cannot stress how high impact these this will be to the average player and their ability to plan and make proper decisions with their roster. I do want to make one point, though. The Red Star Flash event that will be on the first Saturday of every month. The first one you get. Do not worry if you don't have Shuri, because you will not be able to do more than three attacks. You will do the first three nodes, and then you will wait. So... If you can, that's just how all the flash events work. You get three attempts. So if you're at zero, you will have to do one, two, and three. That's it. That's how they all have worked. That's how they will continue to work. I don't know why you think they would be different. You will not get further in that fight than the third star. It will take three months minimum for you to go from one to seven. That said, if it's something you care about, the same with all the other events, Relic Hunt, Payday, you now know how much time you have to build them up. Uh, as for Block Party, you now have two months between each one. So you have two months of effort or 60 days. Great. And the wrapping up, this is a significant overall of the system. The team will be closely monitoring all changes to ensure they're working. No, they won't. Uh, there will be subsequent changes to ensure that we're hitting the mark. Uh, that I believe. Uh, we're looking forward to rolling out the changes as soon as possible and reading your feedback to aid in fine tuning the system. Thanks for your patience while we work getting this out to you. Overall, I can say in all certainty, I believe that these are not only positive changes, uh, good changes. I am a fan of, I would say, a good majority of what they've done. I think that there are a couple of things that they kind of missed the mark on. So if they are looking to make sure they hit the mark, eh, they maybe want to go back on that. But I think the most important takeaway from this is simple. Uh, we are getting more access to red stars, which allows us to control our progression at the level that makes sense, at least so we can do content in the game, while still keeping some of the PvP aspect in War and in, obviously, the upcoming PvP arena, will still have an element of RNG which can benefit them. Uh, I think that giving a specific cadence to the events that are very important to a lot of players helps us as players. So as far as notifications goes, I would venture to say this may be the single best blog they have ever put out, uh, ever. And while there are probably a couple of things they need to tweak a little bit, I look forward to this new Fox Next that is apparently working very hard to make sure that the players in the game are enjoying the game, don't feel disrespected, and don't feel like they are being milked as if they were an infinite supply of money. Uh, that said, comment below and let me know what you think of the changes. I tend to be overly critical of Fox Next, and I know that, so this is a very strange video for me to make. Uh, and probably a strange video for a lot of people to watch. But I do think overall that a lot of these changes are positive, And if they happen as they are written, I think we can imagine a very more stable environment going forward. Outside of that, I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili. And I'll catch you later.